Supporters of Tommy Robinson clash with police in London. The political activist was jailed for 13 months because his use of Facebook could have prejudiced a trial. This week, Sir Brian Leveson, head of criminal justice in the courts of England and Wales, tells me that the law needs updating to cope with the growth in social media. What about the problem of members of the public posting comments on their own Twitter feed, on their own Facebook page, ignorant of the law or perhaps deliberately flouting the law? The difficulty with social media generally is that those who are charged with the responsibility of listening to the trial and deciding it can be affected adversely by what people say. You do, of course, tell jurors not to look at these things, don't you? Yes, we certainly do. One of the things that we instruct them to do is not to look on the internet. However, human beings being what they are, those instructions, I regret to say, have not always been followed. And what is critical at the very heart of all this is that the defendant has a fair trial and that the victims and witnesses are fairly judged by the jury in the light of what has happened in court, unaffected by what others might think or other views that people might express. If that's the case, then presumably you've got to try and stop members of the public commenting on high-profile criminal trials. Well, members of the public ought to know that publishing comments which impact unfairly on the conduct of a criminal trial could constitute contempt of court. And uh, there is a very good recent example of a man who videoed material which he fed into the internet, which did constitute contempt of court, as a result of which he was sentenced to a term of imprisonment. This is Tommy Robinson. It is indeed. The, uh, I'm, I've caused a breach of peace. I'm being arrested. arrested. But the content of what you're uh, Tommy, just streaming... The content of what I'm streaming... What I'm, told, I'm being arrested for breach of the peace. I'm being arrested yeah. for breach of the peace. You've all, watched this. You've You've all watched, watched this. The political activist known as Tommy Robinson was jailed last month for remarks he broadcast on Facebook Live about defendants who were then on trial. He admitted being in contempt of court. He admitted being in contempt of court and was also ordered to serve a suspended sentence for a similar offence last year. He's now seeking to appeal. But surely juries can be relied on to ignore prejudicial comments on social media. I suggested to Sir Brian Leveson that if we can trust juries to decide whether defendants are guilty, we can trust them to judge cases on the evidence they hear in court. Let me start by saying that I do trust juries and... Over nearly 50 years, I've watched jurors work hard to try to reach fair verdicts according to the evidence. But you have to bear in mind that jurors are human beings, just like all of us, and what's more, they don't have the experience that the lawyers have of coming into court every day and sifting material. They are inevitably affected by everything that goes on around them. And if they do have access to what can be vituperative and horrible material on Twitter or an internet feed, then the risk is that they will be affected by it. It could equally be that their friends, their relations, will then pass on to them feelings which will or may in part affect how they think about the evidence in the four corners of the case. What is critical is not only that the defendant receives a fair trial, but that he or she understands and recognises that he's received a fair trial. And if there has been a lot of noise or trending on Twitter around the case, it would not be very difficult for him to conclude, I don't care what the judge has said or how much of a warning the judge has given and how seriously the jury have taken their responsibilities. They cannot but have been affected by this horrible material that has been pushed out on the internet. In the United States, where they have juries, there are no such restrictions and juries try criminal cases. 
The United States is a very different system, and in many cases they can still uh, sequestrate the jurors and keep them away from all this material. Lock them up and keep them from watching television or the internet. Yes, but uh, the fact is the defendant has to have a fair trial. And I'm not sure that a defendant who had been bombarded with adverse material on the internet would feel that he could rely on 12 people who aren't experienced in judging cases, who come into the court from their daily lives, not to be affected by what they read, particularly if it's bombarded. Are you getting your message across to the public that they simply mustn't do this if we are going to continue with our open system of justice? Or is it right to say that, you know, the internet changes everything and we have to have trials behind closed doors? Well, we certainly don't have to have trials behind closed doors. I believe totally, completely in open justice and our criminal courts, save in perhaps one case in a million are all conducted in public so that everybody can see what we are doing, what we, uh, the justice system is doing in the name of the public. Where do we go from here? Do we need to tighten up the law? Well, I think we need to bring our law from a analogue system into a digital age. That the position has to be addressed, I have no doubt. Sir Brian Leveson, as a serving judge, he wouldn't be drawn on how the law should change, not least because reforms are currently being considered by the Attorney-General.